This is Rainbow Soldier. It's October 21st, and this is This Day in History. October 21st, 1967. 100,000 Vietnam protesters marched on the Pentagon. There are some people who believe that Lyndon Johnson was responsible for the assassination of John Kennedy. Whether that could be true or not, no president has suffered any more of a personal hell while in the White House than President Lyndon Johnson, in spite of all the things said about his womanizing and his party going in his language. An unceasing amount of Vietnam protesters continually screamed loudly all through his time in office a chant that he had to have heard daily. Hey, hey, LBJ, how many kids have you killed today? The Vietnam War officially began on November 1st, 1955. Polls taken in the summer of 1967, 12 years after the war had begun, revealed that for the first time, American support for the war had fallen below 50%. In Washington, D.C., on October 21st, 1967, 100,000 people gathered to protest the American War in Vietnam. The marchers included black nationalists, hippies, professors, women's right groups, radicals, liberals, and many war veterans. They all arrived as the Pentagon for just one thing, stop the Vietnam War. The rally in front of the Lincoln Memorial started peacefully, though Dr. Benjamin Spock, who was supposed to be a baby specialist, author, and outspoken critic of the war, did call President Johnson, quote, the enemy. After the rally, the demonstrators, many waving the red, blue, and gold flag of the Viet Cong, began marching toward the Pentagon. Violence erupted when the more radical element of the demonstrators clashed with the soldiers and U.S. Marshals protecting the Pentagon. The soldiers couldn't use their weaponry, and soon many members that had been in the crowd surrounded and occupied the military nerve center until the early hours of October 23rd. By the time order was restored, 683 people, including novelist Norman Mailer and two United Press International reporters, had been arrested. This protest was paralleled by demonstrations in Japan and Western Europe, the most violent of which occurred outside the U.S. Embassy in London when three thousand demonstrators attempted to storm the building. The peace movement began to push harder for an end to the war. The march on Washington was the most powerful sign of their commitment to this cause. The Johnson administration responded by launching a vigorous propaganda campaign to restore public confidence in its handling of the Vietnam War. The president even went so far as to call General William Westmoreland, commander of U.S. forces in Vietnam, back to the United States to address Congress and the public. The effort was somewhat successful with the older folk, but not with college students and those who led them. College students knew that they possibly would be a part of a war they barely understood. In late January 1968, during the Lunar New Year, or Tet, which is a Buddhist holiday, North Vietnamese and Communist Viet Cong forces 
launched a coordinated attack against a number of targets in South Vietnam. The U.S. and South Vietnamese militaries sustained heavy losses before finally repelling the communist assault. Those deaths of our brave young men was the straw that broke the camel's back. From that time on, protests against America's part negative attitude to the Vietnam War continually increased throughout all 50 states and kept going until the end. This is Ray, and I, I think the most startling part of this is that with all the protests, often daily, and sometimes in many states at once, protests that represented the obvious will of most Americans, the war was not officially ended by Lyndon Johnson, nor by the one who followed him, Richard Nixon, or Congress until President Gerald Ford concluded the war on April 30th, 1975. The Vietnam War lasted 20 years. 